हाय फ्रेंड्स एडीएच एंड अल्डोस्टेरॉन टू हार्मोन्स एंड जस्ट लाइक ट्विन ब्रदर्स हुम वी ऑफन मिक्स अप स्टूडेंट्स मिक्स अप इन दीज टू हार्मोन्स दैट इज व्हाट इज देयर मेकेनिज्म ऑफ एक्शन एंड व्हाट दे एक्चुअली रेगुलेट सो दिस वीडियो इज अबाउट व्हाट इज द मेकेनिज्म ऑफ एक्शन ऑफ दीज टू हार्मोन्स why they are called into action and uh, what is their effect eventually so let's understand first why the mix up happens look uh, students have already uh, by hearted that the adh reabsorbs water into the blood it acts on the collecting duct and reabsorbs water water goes into the blood and therefore the students tend to think that if the water is going into the blood blood volume will increase so adh must be having some action on blood volume aldosterone students have already read that the aldosterone reabsorbs sodium and uh, by sodium i mean sodium and water because wherever the sodium moves the water will follow by osmosis so there because the sodium is the great determinant major determinant of our plasma osmolality therefore the students tend to think wrongly that the aldosterone might be having some effect on the plasma osmolality because aldosterone is reabsorbing the sodium into the plasma into the blood therefore uh, it might have the effect on the osmolality well this is the mix up that needs to be corrected these are the perceptions that are not entirely true not entirely accurate let's see why uh let's take one by one first the osmolality and then the blood volume look the plasma osmolality is the sodium concentration relative to water or let's say water concentration relative to sodium all right this is sodium this is water so it's the water concentration relative to sodium which is going to determine the osmolality if for instance water goes down if the water level in the plasma decreases now there is more sodium and less water the plasma has become hyperosmolar or hypertonic let's use the terms interchangeably on the other hand if the water goes up in the plasma now there is less sodium and more water relatively relatively and therefore now the plasma has become hypotonic more water less sodium hypotonicity or hypoosmolarity so osmolality uh, is regulated by the movement of water not by sodium it is uh, regulated by the movement of water and therefore the regulator the main regulator the only regulator of plasma osmolality is adh anti diuretic hormone coming to the blood volume now look uh only water moving into the plasma will not change the blood uh, blood volume much but if sodium moves into the plasma into the blood and water follows then that sodium will hold the water in the plasma and thereby increasing the plasma volume or the blood volume so remember blood volume is regulated is maintained by movement of sodium and water not water alone water alone is going to handle the osmolality part but blood volume will be handled by or regulated by the movement of sodium and therefore water remember aldosterone causes reabsorption of sodium and because sodium moves into the blood into the plasma water follows and then the sodium holds that water in the plasma and expanding the plasma volume or the blood volume and also remember that blood volume and blood pressure go hand in hand so if the blood volume increases the blood pressure is also going to increase so please uh, 
keep this first point in mind that the osmolality is regulated by the movement of water alone and uh, that's controlled by the ADH action and uh, blood volume is controlled by the sodium movement and therefore the water movement. Wherever sodium goes, water follows by osmosis. So sodium and water moving and that uh, will regulate the blood volume and which is under the control of aldosterone. Therefore, the aldosterone is the major, major regulator of the blood volume and blood pressure. Now that having said, let's see their mechanisms of action. How they perform these actions? Let's start with the ADH. Let's say if there is hypertonic plasma or hyperosmolar plasma. Hyperosmolar means there is more sodium and relatively less water. This is hypertonic or hyperosmolar plasma. Now this plasma uh, is circulating throughout the body. So it will enter the brain as well. And in the hypothalamus, there are osmoreceptors. Those osmoreceptors will sense this hypertonic plasma and then uh, they will cause release of ADH from the posterior pituitary gland. This ADH will circulate, will reach the kidneys and it will cause water reabsorption from the collecting duct. Now the water reabsorption from the collecting duct uh, uh, and coming into the blood, into the plasma will now uh, normalize the osmolality of the plasma. Remember, the starting point was hypertonic plasma, more sodium, less water. Now, ADH causes reabsorption of water and therefore the osmolality is normalized. How does the aldosterone work? Let's see that also. Yes. Decreased blood volume and decreased blood pressure, therefore, are the starting points for the action of uh, aldosterone. So if there is a decreased blood volume and decreased blood pressure, let's say because of the hemorrhage or some other uh, reason, it will be sensed by volume sensors. Look, osmolality was sensed by the osmoreceptors in the hypothalamus. Uh, volume sensors or volume receptors are present at various places in the body. They are present in the heart, they are present in the major vessels, they are present in the renal artery. So, uh, in the renal artery, in the renal blood vessels, there are these volume sensors. Uh, they will sense that there is a decreased blood volume. And then the JG apparatus, or to be precise, the JG cell in the kidney, uh, it will secrete the renin. Renin will uh, now initiate the renin angiotensin aldosterone axis or renin angiotensin aldosterone system. Aldosterone has been secreted by the adrenal cortex gland. Now this aldosterone will reach out to the kidney again and it will reabsorb the sodium. So remember the main action of aldosterone is to reabsorb sodium uh, from the renal tubules and as the sodium moves water will follow by osmosis and therefore we say sodium and water reabsorption but it is sodium reabsorption which is under the influence of aldosterone please understand uh, adh was causing the water movement exclusively aldosterone is causing sodium movement exclusively and sodium uh, causes water to follow therefore water is moving uh, it's not similar to the adh action so sodium and water reabsorbed, sodium will hold that water into the plasma, the plasma volume, the blood volume will expand, increase and therefore the blood pressure increases. Please understand, uh, although plasma osmolality is mainly determined by the sodium, sodium is the great determinant of uh, or uh, important determinant of plasma osmolality, but that does not mean aldosterone has impact on the osmolality. Because when the aldosterone causes movement of sodium, water is going to follow and therefore it's not going to change the osmolality. Understand this, sodium, water, if both are going to increase, then osmolality will not change. So aldosterone is not regulating the osmolality, 
it is regulating the blood volume and blood pressure so let these things let these concepts be clear uh, now the last point and this i often call physio plus plus because these are extra concepts uh, if you narrate these concepts in your vivas or uh, in the exams you are likely to get extra marks uh, is adh linked to the blood volume by any chance i mean adh is causing reabsorption of water into the blood so blood volume does it expand and therefore does it have any role in the expansion of blood volume yes there are certain instances that adh may have some role in the uh, blood volume expansion but first keep this in mind adh is equal to osmolality and osmolality by movement of water once that being that uh, having said now see here when is it that adh uh, can have a role in expansion of blood volume it is in the second stage of circulatory shock when uh, there is 25% uh, 20 25% blood volume has been lost uh, it's a second stage of circulatory shock hemorrhagic shock hypovolemic shock maybe and now look hemorrhage has occurred blood volume has decreased now plasma is normotonic there is no change in the uh, osmolality or tonicity of the plasma only the plasma volume and blood volume has decreased because of the hemorrhage all right now what happens is it's a dire condition so apart from the other mechanisms even adh comes into action adh will cause reabsorption of water as it does normally and uh, this will increase the blood volume and the blood volume will be normalized all right but note here an important conceptual point that here the starting point was blood volume had decreased but osmolarity or tonicity was normal and now the adh has increased the water in the plasma adh has caused water reabsorption so normotonic plasma that's the starting point and now water has been gained in the plasma so now the plasma is going to be hypotonic do you understand this point the volume has been corrected but the tonicity has changed now and the plasma has become hypotonic so this type of change that the plasma has uh, become hypotonic but volume uh, was corrected body has to tolerate and accept this change at least for some time why because the priority was to normalize the blood volume it was second stage of circulatory shock and the priority was to normalize the blood volume first normalize the blood pressure first and in that attempt if the plasma becomes hypotonic so be it body is going to tolerate it for some time but the priority is given to the correction of blood volume so in such an instance yes adh will have some role to play in the blood volume but i would reiterate again finally remember this forever adh regulates the osmolality by movement of water aldosterone uh, regulates the blood volume and blood pressure by causing the movement of sodium and along with that the movement of water it's not water alone but because of the sodium the water moves and that is what changes the blood volume and blood pressure so let these be uh, concepts be very very clear in your minds